Hi, my name is k -Math. This podcast is brought to you by Majuba TVET College, and it specifically relates to income tax and six for South African TVET Colleges. In this presentation, I'm going to tackle question five of November 2016, and I'm going to make reference to the Cycle Student Handbook, and I'm specifically going to look at the South African Income Tax Act. I'm hoping to address the following subject outcomes, the calculation of tax income of a farmer, the calculation of tax expense of a farmer. And I hope that students will attain the following learning objectives at the end of this presentation. Students will be able to identify, identify farming income and expenses, identify capital development expenditure, calculate capital allowances, and apply the definition of gross income and farming income. I'm going to do question five, and I'm going to ex employ the Excel spreadsheet to illustrate the calculation of taxable income of a farmer. Without wasting your time, I'm going to take you to the question paper. That's how it looks like. It relates to male who's married in community of property to Brooke, and both male and Brooke are under the age of 65. Male, it's a vegetable farmer, and cut dates were required to determine males tax payable for the year ended 28 February 2015. That's the provided information. Let's see how we're going to take into account the provided information to determine taxable income. I'd like to take you to a spreadsheet that I'm going to use to calculate males taxable income. That's essentially how it looks like. It starts by specifying the year of assessment as 28 February 2015. That column specifically will be utilized for descriptions and that column will be utilized to reflect amounts that are considered to be farming income or expenses. It's actually farming income and expenses, and such items will be used to calculate what we call taxable income from farming. That column specifically will be used to communicate what we call capital development expenditure, which are also referred to as CDE. And that column will be utilized to calculate other items that are not attributable to farming and at the end we're going to transfer whatever taxable in, uh, taxable income we've determined in that column to that column let's go to the required information and see how we're going to calculate males taxable income first we're going to start with receipt to determine what we call gross income uh, remember that male is a farmer therefore vegetable sold will be classified as his gross income as attributable to carrying on trade. He is carrying on uh, trade as a farmer. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it there. And I'm going to, take the amount, and I'm going to classify it as farming income. The amount is 840. I'm going to take the amount of 840. And I'm going to include it there. Remember, this is attributable to farming. That's why I included it in the farming column. Moving along swiftly, the next item relates to sale of a tractor. So these are proceeds. These were proceeds from sale of a tractor. I'm of the view that these proceeds are capital in nature and therefore will not be included in determining taxable income of uh, a mill. Remember, at TVET, we do not do capital gains tax. So the tax consequences arising from capital gains tax are excluded for the purpose of our studies. Therefore, this amount means capital in nature in terms of the definition of gross income, and therefore I'm not going to take it into account in the determination of male's tax of income. However, I need to specify that we were not given uh, sufficient information to calculate what we call recruitment. Recruitment would have been included in male's tax of income. However, since we're not given sufficient information, I'm going to assume that this amount is capital in nature. Therefore, I'm going to indicate by zero that the amount is capital in nature. Moving along swiftly, the next item relates to loan or cash received. I'm going to copy that description. I'm going to paste it there. I'm going to place a zero there because the amount is capital in nature. It does not meet the definition of gross income. If you look at the definition of gross income, one of the components specifically says if an amount is capital in nature, it will be excluded from the taxpayer's uh, taxable income. In this case, it's excluded because remember, uh, Mel is a farmer. He's not necessarily in the business of receiving loans. He got a loan, but he's gonna 
uh, repay the capital uh, uh, portion. Therefore, this amount is not Mel's cross income. Moving along swiftly, the next part relates to rental income. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to include it in Mel's determination of taxable income. Remember, even if this amount was actually received by Brooke, uh, by virtue of the fact that Mel and Brooke are married in community of property. In terms of Section 7, we're going to deem this rental income to, be, to also be income of Mel. However, we're going to divide it by 2. And I clearly need to specify that it's not attributable to farming. However, it's still considered to be gross income, as it meets the definition of gross income. So I'm going to take that amount. How much is it? It's 40,000. I'm going to take the amount of 40,000. I'm going to divide by 2. Remember, it's a principle. The 20,000 will be taxable in the hands of Mel, even if uh, it actually was received by uh, Brooke. And the other 20,000 will be taxable in the hands of Brooke. Remember, this has to do with the fact that the two are married in community of property. And one of the items that we divided by two, when a taxpayer is married in community of property, is rental income from fixed property. Moving along swiftly, I'm going to address uh, payments. The first payment relates to improvement of a house. I'm going to take it. This amount, certainly, it's capital in nature. If this was to be deductible in terms of Section 11A, it wouldn't meet uh, the capital uh, in nature uh, component. Remember, Section 11A specifically excludes uh, expenditure that is capital in nature. This expenditure, as you would know, it's capital in nature. As you would know in accounting, this expenditure would actually be capitalized and taken to the balance sheet. For the purpose of tax, it's not uh, deductible in terms of Section 11A as it's capital in nature. There are no uh, allowances granted uh, in order to deduct that uh, expenditure. Therefore, we're going to indicate by zero that the amount is capital in nature. Moving along swiftly, the next item relates to repairs of a farmhouse. Remember, the farmhouse is used for residential purposes by a farmer. It's not necessarily an asset that is used uh, for farming purposes. In that sense, repairs will be uh, domestic expenses or private expenses in terms of section 23. Remember, section 11a, it's read together with section 23, and if you specifically go to section 23, private or domestic expenses uh, are not permissible deductions. Therefore, I'm going to indicate by zero, not deductible. The next item relates to houses built for five workers. Uh, this expense is capital in nature, not deductible in terms of Section 11A. However, there are specific uh, uh, provisions relating to capital allowances that grants a, a deduction for that specific item. So I'm going to say capital allowance. I'll also specify that provision, capital allowance. Um, it was houses. Um, the capital allowance will be granted in terms of section 13.6, it's called. 13.6. It's for farming purposes, as the residential units are used to, for farming purposes. There's provision of housing for males workers. Therefore, I'm going to take the amount. The amount is 60,000. I'm going to take the 60,000 and I'm going to multiply by 10. So I'm going to say equals to minus 60,000. I'll explain just now where I got the 10 from. Multiply by 10%. There you go, 60,000. Let's quickly go to the slide and explain the principles relating to the deduction of that amount. So for a tax, in order for a taxpayer to be entitled to a capital allowance in terms of 13, section 13, sex, the taxpayer must have... Um, uh, erected uh, what we call residential units, residential units. Uh, in this case, yes, certainly these are new residential units. A male is a resident of the Republic, and there's nothing that suggests that the units are not in the Republic, therefore they are situated within the Republic. Uh, yes, male owns at least uh, five residential units. Let's quickly go there. It specifically said that male built it, uh, uh, Houses, houses built for five workers, so we assume that each uh, worker got a house. Therefore, um, 
that requirement is met in terms of Mel having built, having erected uh, five residential uh, units. So what are the tax consequences if uh, an expenditure complies to the components of Section 13.6? A taxpayer, Mel in this case, will be granted a deduction of 5% on the cost of the house. So the 5% on the cost of 60000 the total cost of 5000 was 60000 so Mel will be granted 5%. However, an additional 5%, which makes it 10%, 5 plus 5, an additional 5% will be granted if such houses are considered to be low residential unit. And, 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 and for a house to be classified as a low residential unit, its cost price must not exceed 300000 As you can clearly see, the cost price of the house did not exceed uh, 300000 Therefore, Mel will be entitled to the first five percent that is given, and and the additional five percent because these houses are classified as low cost houses. So that's essentially how I got to the six thousand. Remember, I took the sixty thousand and I multiplied by ten percent. Remember the set deduction. So I had to insert a negative figure to show that it will reduce the income of Mel in determining Mel's taxable income. Moving along swiftly, let's go to the next item. The next item relates to erecting of a new fence. I want to copy that. I want to paste it there. I want to write the amount before I even explain the principles relating to that. I think it's 200,000 if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to write 200,000 even if I do not indicate with negative, it doesn't matter. However, if I wanted to indicate with negative, all amounts contained in that column should be uh, communicated with a negative sign but I've decided I'm not going to communicate them with a minus sign don't worry I'll explain at a later stage for tax purposes of, for when you calculate the taxable income of a farmer we have what we call capital development expenditure and if you want to know what capital development expenditures are you need to go to the first schedule of the income tax act and you specifically need to go to paragraph 12 Paragraph 12 specifically tells you what capital development expenditures are. Paragraph 12a says eradication of a nation's plant is what we call a capital development expenditure. The prevention of soil erosion is what we call a capital development expenditure. And the following, the rest of those are what we call capital development expenditure. Please, I'd like to emphasize, because I realize most students would have difficulties in dealing with the tax consequences attributable to the capital development expenditure. It's important to know that you cannot thumbs up what a capital development expenditure. You always need to go to that list to check whether something is classified as a capital development expenditure. Since we're not writing an open book test, I, I suggest that you memorize all those so that when you write a, a farming question, you're able to clearly uh, identify uh, your capital development expenditure. Now, let me do a quick explanation. The reason those are in green is because those are not limited to taxable income from farming. But from C to F, from C to F, all those items are limited to taxable income from farming. For that reason, we extract this column. And in this column, we're going to communicate capital development expenditures that are, are limited to taxable income from farming. So new fence is definitely a capital development expenditure. There you go in terms of paragraph uh, uh, 12E of the first schedule of the South African Income Tax Act. It's certainly a capital development expenditure. It is limited. We specifically told, so we're not thumb sucking, we specifically told it is limited to taxable income from farming. That's why I put it in, in that column because I still need to determine taxable income from farming. Once that is determined, then I'm going to transfer that amount and deduct it uh, from taxable income from farming. Moving along swiftly, let's address the next item. The next item relates to repairs of a fence. Repairs of a fence, it is farming expense. Certainly it's farming expense, I'm going to take it there. However, it's not a CDE because it's not capital in nature. We only address those expenses that are capital uh, in nature before they can also be classified as capital development expenditures. So because this relates to repairs, it's revenue in nature, 
Uh, therefore, it will be a permissible deduction in terms of Section 11A because it is an expense that is incurred in the production of income. Remember, Mel is a farmer, and this expense it's not capital in nature. Therefore, I'm going to include it there. Minus apologies, minus two thousand. Minus two thousand. There you go. Remember, the purpose of this exercise uh, is to calculate the total taxable income of milk. However, we separate it. We're going to calculate taxable income from farming, and then we're going to transfer the CDEs. If there's anything left, we'll transfer it to that column. But I'm going to explain the principle at the end. Moving along swiftly, let's see what else we need to take into account. We also have the interest on bond to purchase a farm. This expense will be deductible in terms of Section 11A. It's an expense. It's incurred in the production of income. It's not capital in nature. Remember, the, the, the interest portion of the loan, it's never considered to be uh, capital in nature. It's, it's what we say. It's revenue in nature. Therefore, it will be deductible because it's an expense incurred in the production of income. I'm going to say minus. Let's quickly go. See, 58,000. 58,000. There you go. The next item is interest on loan from bank. The same principle applies. This expense, it looks like it was a loan to help with farming expenses. It's not uh, capital in nature. It's revenue in nature. Therefore, it's deductible in terms of Section 11A. It's an expense incurred in the production of income. 8000 There you go. The next item... Uh, Fertilizer purchased. Let me copy. Apologies. Fertilizer purchased. Okay, let me do that. So both those items, fertilizer purchase and seeds purchase, they're clearly not capital in nature and they are expenses incurred in the production of income in terms of Section 11A. Therefore, they are both deductible. It's an amount of 14,000 minus 14,000 and an, an amount of 9,000. There you go. The next item is wages. When, let's assume that this wages are for farm workers. Therefore, the amount is not capital in nature. It's deductible in terms of Section 11A. It's an expense incurred in the production of income. 95,000, I'm thinking. There you go, deductible. The next item is medical expense. It's also an expense uh, that is permissible in terms of Section 11A. This expense is actually permissible in terms of Section 11A. It's an expense that is incurred in the production of income. There isn't any limit. I know in TVET we would normally say it's 10% of uh, wages or salaries. I, I think it's, it's a misinterpretation. This expense is deductible in full in terms of Section 11A. It's an expense incurred in the production of income. It's not subject to the limits of Section 11L. Therefore, I'm going to deduct this amount in full, minus 10, 500. There you go. Moving along swiftly. The next item relates to prevention of soil erosion. I'm going to take that. I'm going to paste it there. Remember, prevention of soil erosion is a CDE as defined. It's a capital development expenditure. However, for calculation purposes, because this item is not limited to taxable income, we're going to take it to that column directly. How much is an amount? 180,000. It's not limited to taxable income. Essentially, what it means is we don't have to wait. We don't have to determine your CDEs and determine your taxable income and limit this amount to ta farming taxable income because we specifically told in paragraph 12 that this item Yes, it's a CDE. However, it's not limited to farming taxable income. That's where we calculating farming taxable income. It can actually cause what we call an assessed loss. So even if it exceeds the taxable income from farming, it's okay. That's why I'm taking it in, in that column. Please uh, 
practice this principle. The next item relates to purchase of a new tractor. Allow me to do it at the end because I want to finish with your capital development expenditure. Dam completed. It is a capital development expenditure. Certainly, I want to write the amount that side. How much is 125? Then I'll talk about it just now. 125. 125. Let me go to my presentation slide. In terms of uh, the first schedule of the South African Income Tax Act, uh, paragraph 12 to be specific, um, 12D, DEMS are considered to be what we call capital development expenditure. However, they are limited to taxable income from farming. Hence, I'm going to write them in that column. Remember this uh, column is specifically re reserved for those capital development expenditures that are limited to taxable income from farming. Moving along swiftly. The next item relates to eradication of plants. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it there. I'm going to write the amount here, minus. Let's quickly go get the amount. 35,500. 35,500. Once more again, I'd like to explain the principle. Yes, it's a CDE, however, it is not limited to taxable income from farming. Therefore, we're going to write it this side because we only use that column for those CDEs that are limited to taxable income from farming. Moving along swiftly, the next item is fuel. I'm going to take fuel. Fuel is an expense that is in kit in the production of income. It is not a capital development expenditure. Not all items relating to a farmer are considered to be um, capital development expenditure. If you want to know what capital development expenditures are, please do not thumb suck them. You have to go to paragraph 12 of the first schedule. So this is an expense, it's incurred in the production of income. It will definitely be deductible in terms of section 11A, 85,000. Is it 85,000? Yes, 85,000. 85, 1, 2, 3, there you go. The next item, we're almost there, it's uh, cash drawings. This is not an expense, nor is it a loss. If you borrow the principles in accounting, you would know that we do not have an expense under operating expense when we require to uh, draft the income statement that is called drawings. So this amount is capital in nature. It's, it's, it's not even, it's not, it's not an expense because the, the, the owner just decided to go take the money which is not necessarily an expense, nor is it a loss. Therefore, I'm going to write a zero there. It's capital in nature, if you want. It's not deductible in terms of Section 11A. Okay. The next item that I'd like to tackle, remember I skipped that item because I want to tackle that item now. That item is called, it's a capital allowance. Allow me to write... To indicate allowance, it relates to a tractor. It's important that you tell us what asset you're dealing with. I'm going to use section 12B. So I'm going to calculate tax expense relating to that item in terms of section 12B. Remember the capital amount of 275, it's capital in nature, not deductible in terms of section 11A. However, we have section 12b that, that that grants a capital allowance on the cost of the new tractor let's quickly go discuss on the presentation slide how we're going to go about in uh, determining the deductible portion in terms of uh, the capital allowance section 12b if a taxpayer male in this case uh, acquires an asset that is used for farming purposes, mail will be granted 50% uh, on costs as a capital allowance in the first year. And in the second year, mail will be granted 30% on cost. And in the third year, mail will be granted 20% on cost. I clearly want to specify that this uh, section is not apportioned. So even if mail was to use it for two months in the year of assessment, this is not a portion. Mail will be granted a full deduction. So let's quickly go make it applicable. 
So remember, we in 2015, it's very important that you understand the impact of uh, dates. We are in 2015. There you go. That's our current year of assessment, 28 February 2015. Mel purchased the tractor on the 31st of December 2012. This falls into 2013. So Mel actually purchased this vehicle in terms of year of assessment in 2013 year of assessment. Let's go to the application. So in 2013, Mel would have been entitled to 50% on cost. In 2014, Mel would have been entitled to 30%. But now because we're in 2015, Mel is going to be entitled to 20%. We're interested in the 20%. So we're simply going to say equals to minus because it's going to reduce income. We're going to multiply that by the costs. We're going to multiply that by the cost. The cost is 275 in terms of section 12B of the Income Tax Act. There you go. Next, I'd like to determine tax consequences relating. Remember, I've exhausted all those items. I want to determine tax consequences relating to a plow. The same principle applies. The plow is an asset that is used in farming. Therefore, men will be entitled to a capital allowance. Let's say it's a plow. Let's be specific. It's still section. 12B. Remember, Mel is not entitled to a deduction of the entire 50,000 because this is a capital expenditure. It's not permissible in terms of Section 11A, but however, it is permissible. It's granted a capital allowance in terms of uh, Section 12B. He bought it in the previous year. Previous year, it's 2014 in relation to 2015. So in the previous year, he would have been entitled to 50% on cost. However, we are in 2015, he's entitled to 30% on cost. So that's how we go about in determining calculations relating to capital allowances. I'm going to multiply this by, I'm going to multiply this by the cost price of the plow. How much is the cost price? 50,000, we're going to multiply by 50,000. There you go, 15,000. The last thing that we need to determine is the tax consequences arising from the closing stock. That closing stock is estimated in the field, not yet ready to be harvested. Therefore, we do not take it into account in determining. I'm going to write closing stock. Field. We're not going to take it into account in determining the taxable income from farming. The next item, it's still closing stock, but uh, it relates to crops in barn. So we're going to take it into account in crops because this is the stuff that is ready basically to be sold. So we're going to take it into account. We're going to include it in the determination of taxable income of mail. We specifically told in paragraph two in, in, in schedule uh, one of the Income Tax Act that we actually need to include it in the determination of the farmer's uh, taxable income. Inclusion means that we're going to add it. There's nothing else. We're at the end. Now I'm going to determine I'm going to determine the tax expense I'm going to determine the taxable income from farming by totaling all items from that column. So I'm going to say sum of, let me quickly go there. There you go, enter, there you go. That's the sum of. So my taxable income from farming is 282. Remember, I'm not going to write the description because I also want to bring the total of capital development expenditures. Let me just copy that there. So this is how you should interpret this. We have taxable income of 282 and we have capital development expenditure of 
235. Remember, 325. Remember, at the end of the day, we want to deduct the CED, capital development expenditure, from your taxable income from farming. However, all these items are limited to that amount, meaning that we cannot deduct an amount greater than that. So we have to limit your capital development expenditure came to 325. So we're going to say minus 282. That's the amount that we're going to transfer because this amount is not supposed to exceed that amount. So we're only going to deduct 282 of 325 relating to CDEs. So we're going to post it there. There you go. Minus 282 triple zero. There you go. I just want to make an example. If there was 100,000, we're going to take the entire 100,000 and post that side because the 100,000 wouldn't have exceeded the 282. But if it exceeds this amount, the 325 exceeds the 282, that's why we're only taking 282 out of that amount. Now our taxable income, I want to communicate the value of, of my taxable income. My taxable income, it will be clearly, it will be zero. We no longer have taxable income. Uh, however, our CDE that we will transfer in the next, I'm just going to say some of that. So this will be the balance that is carried forward in the next year to be CDE. It will be considered to be a CDE to, together with new CDEs that are incurred by the taxpayer. We no longer have taxable income from farming because it has been consumed by the CDEs, so it has cancelled them out. However, we left with 20,000. Our taxable income, it's 20,000. Remember, if we had something there, we're going to take that something and transfer it that's, that side. But we, we don't have anything because it was eaten up by your CDEs. So we're going, our taxable income at the end, it's 20,000. Remember, this is not your taxable income. I just quickly want to say some zero. So we're going to take the zero, transfer it that side to join that uh, other income. So we only have 20,000 that is attributable to other income. Now we're going to apply the tax table. I'm going to say tax as per table. If you remember properly, the first bracket says 18%. It will be 18% because if you go to the tax table, let me quickly go show you the tax table, if I can get it. There you go. If we quickly go to the tax table, that's the tax table. So we're going to apply that uh, bracket because our taxable income, that is male taxable income, it's between those amounts. So we're going to take 18%. Let me quickly go. Apply 18%, so we're going to say equals to 20,000. We're going to multiply that by 18% to determine the taxes per table. To determine the tax liability of mail, we're going to less rebate. So I'm going to less the primary rebate. Remember, uh, primary rebate is given to all taxpayers regardless of their age. Let's quickly go get the amount of the primary rebate. It's 12. So I'm going to say 12. 726. That's my primary rebate. A male is not entitled to any other rebate. Mel is not entitled to medical tax credit because he didn't contribute to the medical to the medical aid. Mel is also not entitled to other age rebates because male is less than 65. Therefore, the tax liability of male will be zero. So Mel doesn't have to pay tax because um, I'm just going to put the zero. Mel doesn't have to pay tax because his tax expense um, doesn't exceed his rebates. And, and Mel is also not entitled to a, 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 a refund because um, rebates do not give you a refund. Thank you, guys. This is where my presentation ends.